Y'all, I really believe the rumors are true. I really believe that the rumors of Ashley, this being her last season, I believe it's true. Because why else would that heifer be sitting up there rubbing on Michael Darby's crusty, dusty, nasty, ashy feet? I don't understand. There is nothing in the world that would make me believe that she actually is in love with that man after all the allegations, after all the foolishness that he has been doing. Girl, you are not going to sit up here and try to convince me that you still love that man and you rub his feet every night because you just are so head over heels. Girl, please, girl, you know that this Bravo check about to cut off pretty soon and you ain't going to have no other source of income, okay? That is the only reason why she is sitting up there rubbing up on that man's feet. And honestly, I think it's the weirdest thing. And I feel like Michael knows that that's exactly what's happening. So he's making her do all these odd things just to put her in her place and make sure that she understands that he is the one that's in power. And whenever he says jump, she needs to be saying how high because why else would somebody want to be rubbing on that old man's feet? I thought it should have been the other way around. Huh? Uh, girl, please tell me, girl. We in here talking about the Real Housewives trailer. Now, girl, I tried to get the video and I wanted to put it on to the screen, but dear, <laughs> YouTube is not playing with me, okay? YouTube was like, uh uh, that's copyright. We're going to snatch this down. We might snatch your video. So I said, you know what? <laughs> I will bow out gracefully. I'm not about to play with these people because I'm trying to get my money. You hear what I'm saying? So, anyway, with with all that being said, hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle and this is the Belle Perspective and we are here to talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8 Reunion Special. Now what I will say, Andy, don't play with us. Bravo, please don't play with us. This this reunion best be wrapped up in at least uh, one episode and page. Like don't get, please, if we have three episodes, I'm going to be very pissed off because what nothing going on in the whole damn season. I mean, we spent so much time with Robin and Karen, not Karen, Robin and Candace arguing back and forth. Girl, now in the beginning of the the beginning of the reunion, now I, I've noticed this with all the other reunions, and I I said that I feel like he's been doing this so that he can lead up into the Potomac. He has been, Andy, I'm talking about, has been on this whole path of moving forward and mending fences. And he said, I want to set an intention today to make sure that the path, that we are going to make paths to move forward. I said, Andy, please <laughs> stop playing. You living in La La Land right now, Andy. Stop playing. The door is closed. The door is closed. The door is closed. Okay. These girls hate each other, all right? And the only way I possibly, the only way that I really truly feel that we would be able to halfway get some semblance of a, a show is if G Giselle goes. Giselle needs to go, okay? Giselle literally is the only woman on that show that I do not like. And I'm this is my first season watching the show. Giselle gotta go, y'all. She really has to go. She has a nasty attitude. She keeps up mess. It's Giselle, y'all. It really is Giselle. If I, if y'all look at my clip from Foolishness on the Internet, the way that Karen talked about her for JJ, the way that Karen talked about her going to sing, sing. I mean, just calling her a a, a horror from Hampton University, and she was able to get over that, but she still can't get over Candace and Wendy. Girl, no, girl. Please wrap this up. It's time for Giselle to go on home. Log off for us, baby, for real. But I do believe that Ashley is leaving. I do think so. So the other couple pieces that I said, oh, Lord. Okay. Ashley and Mike, Gordon, the DJ, <laughs> as Andy called him, and Mia. So did Gordon get the, did he get the arrangement that, that he had already said when they were sitting down at the table during the season? Is this the arrangement? Because they show a clip of Gordon and Mia and her on the on the phone with the DJ, I guess his name is Ink, I-N-C, whatever. Gordon was like, hey, what's up, man? What's, what is, what kind of, what is this? Now, I'm not mad, right? I'm not mad. And, and if you, if this, if this is what works for you, go right on. Okay, go forth and be great. But what is going on? Mia, you and Gordon got a lot of splendor to do, okay? And are they... Is it because they know that Bravo is paying and they want to see this whole foolishness play out so they both know because both of them broken and got nothing going on? Like, what is happening? Girl, 
I don't even know. They also bring up Jeremiah, which is Mia's son. And they question the paternity of Mia's son, Jeremiah, and that Gordon doesn't think that Jeremiah is his son. And Ink, who is her boyfriend, who Gordon is fine with, thinks that the the baby belongs to him. And then Ashley in the background was like, still? Now, I don't know if that was editing. I don't know if that was editing. But this is something that was already going on? Girl, what in the hell? Now, see, the thing about Mia is that Every time I want to believe her, every time I want to give her the benefit of the doubt, I think about how desperate she is to stay on this show. So I don't know if this is a real true storyline or if she in here playing in our face so that she could try to get a, a few more checks and a few more coins from Bravo because that's what it feels like. It, I, Gordon doesn't give me I'm okay with having an open relationship. He gives me, and he already said it, I'm fine with you having a boy toy on the side, but just don't let me know about it. I feel like that's what he wants so for them to be acting like this I, something strange y'all get down in the comments and tell me what y'all think because something strange something is strange okay anyway candace calling robin a loser i said candace has been listening and reading the comments because everybody in their mama was calling robin a loser especially with that whole situation with with juan and juan sitting over there paying for that girl hotel and it, and robin sitting up there believing him like boo boo the damn fool and honestly, did all the husbands come? I didn't get to see. I felt like maybe all the husbands were there. They better talk about that hotel scandal. If they glaze over that, oh, hell no. Nah. Especially if we're going to sit up here and watch them for three three episodes, three hours of my time. No, ma'am. They best talk about Juan and his hotel debauchery. Come on, okay? Anyway, what else is going on? What else is going on? That is it. That is all that, I, that pointed out to me. Again, Candace is reading Giselle for filth. Saying that she's an imp, <laughs> uh, the devil's crafty minion, you know, the things that Candace comes up with because she is so very witty, okay? And they're never going to bury the hatchet. Now, here's the thing I personally feel if Giselle came correct that they could bury the hatchet, but I don't know, all right? Now, word on the curb is that Giselle's seating placement is a warning shot, basically, to let her know, ma'am, you better get, you got 24 hours to get your shit together, or you, your ass out on the street, right? So, I don't know. I don't know. But, are you looking forward to seeing the trailer? Girl. <laughs> we, it, It's gonna be a time. It definitely is going to be a time, okay? Y'all get down in the comments, sound off, let me know. You know I wanted to put the the, the video in y'all know I wanted to put the audio or something in the video but I couldn't because baby <laughs> Bravo is not playing with their stuff and I'm not playing with Bravo okay anyway sign off in the comments let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next one take care